IT worker Patrick Quintle deeply regrets buying into apartments in Sydney's west. He says people shouldn't buy off the plan or into newly built apartments. Don't. Just don't do it. You are playing Russian roulette with your life, basically, is what's happening. Um, in fact, I think you might actually have better odds playing Russian roulette than this. Patrick's apartment was built by Top Place, once one of Australia's largest privately owned development companies. The developer went into administration in July 2023, and its founder, Jean Nassif, who's believed to be overseas and wanted by police on fraud charges, left behind dozens of developments with defects. Mr Quintal is now one of hundreds of owners that are expected to pay upwards of $180,000 each to fix serious defects. He worries the building, which is being held up by a temporary structure, could collapse. The building as it stands could not support any kind of movement that was similar to a seismic activity, right? Further out of Sydney, Alyssa is another disappointed consumer. She's taking legal action against another builder that she says didn't finish the job properly. She's finding traces of what might be toxic silica dust throughout her home. Mentally, I try to be strong um, for myself, for the family and for my baby, but I feel um, that, you know, my baby shouldn't deserve this. The consumer pain is holding back people from building. The latest building approvals data for February shows another steep decline and confirms Australia's record level of immigration is outpacing new construction. Perth developer and industry veteran Nigel Satterley is calling for changes that would require builders to put consumer deposits into a trust account. We need a lot more corporate uh, regulation around directors that trade you know, the building companies that know they can't pay the bills or they're insolvent. Figures from corporate watchdog ASIC show that in the year to March 17, there's been almost 2,000 building and construction company insolvencies. That's well above the rate seen in the year before. And when builders go under, it's not just customers that are left in the lurch. Often subcontractors and suppliers also miss out on getting paid. I think there should be serious regulation that if they're not paid, they should be able to lodge an immediate complaint for protection. The soaring cost of building is another problem the sector faces. There's such a pent up demand. People don't want to take that step because there is that lack of confidence. And I think it comes from two places. One, lack of confidence about their affordability uh, and also lack of confidence in, in building. I love the space that you get through the rear here, especially with the, the ceiling height. That's forcing builders to cut costs. It was almost one year ago when Simmons Homes had to make the tough decision to cut 10% of its workforce. Let's not deny it, it has been a, it's been a tough period for the industry for the last probably two to three years. For all those three years, Patrick Quintal has been fighting to have authorities take responsibility for the mess created. He says the onus shouldn't be on consumers to fix problems with dodgy builders. And they've just kind of you know, left us to hang dry. Like Patrick, for many, there'll be no easy fix.